Today, it's Texas Tech in West Virginia. And now, KMAX Stan Smith and Mason Horodisky break down the game before the game. This is KMAC Red Raider Nation's Countdown to Kickoff. Welcome, welcome, welcome into Red Raider Nation's Countdown to Kickoff. Stan Smith, Mason Horodisky, David Collier in a moment. And we're well rested <laughs> off that bye week. Hope you are as well. Hope you are as well. Whew, long, long road trip from back and forth from Kansas City. That don't matter, though. We're here. It's back to football. And we're back after the bye week. I can't wait. Football's back, baby. But... It's the John Denver Bowl coming oh, yeah. up later today as the WVU Mountaineers stroll into town. We give you all the info you need to know on the blue and gold. Also coming up, if the Red Raiders are looking to defend the Jones, they'll have to get through David Collier. He's outside the Jones right now. And later, Board Games makes their return. What are the key stats you should keep an eye on? Well, you better stay tuned for that and what we will talk about coming up later. But six games are down, yep. six more to go in year number one of Joey McGuire's first year at the helm of the Red Raiders. So let's recap on how we got to this moment, shall we? In week one, the Red Raiders got off to a resounding start, 63-10 to 10 win over Murray State. But Tyler Shuck went down in that one, unfortunately. Enter Donovan Smith in week two. They had a thrilling overtime win over Houston in what would be the first statement win of Joey McGuire's career so far in Lubbock but the next week the wheels kind of fell off they met their match in NC State on the road turnovers did them in against the Wolfpack and after the first loss of the Joey McGuire era they returned home and partied like it was 2008 taking down the Texas Longhorns in the biggest win then of Joey McGuire's era after that, though, the road woes continued off of that interception against Kansas State by Donnie Dimes. Joey McGuire not trying to pay Dimes to the Big 12 Conference after that one. But after that, more road games and, well, more road woes. Baron Morton gets his first start of his career, and despite the early Bear Raid, the Red Raiders would fall to the Oklahoma State, fall to 3-3 three and three on the year, which is exactly where we find ourselves right now. Halfway through the season, sitting at 500 right now not too shabby for a first-time college head coach but where do you think the red raiders can really improve going into this second stretch you gotta look at it a couple different ways number one you got a win over the boogeyman in what yeah. seems over the last several years in Texas. A lot of things working. Number one in the country in passing offense, but you have to look at it this way, where they haven't really forced a lot of turnovers. Mm -hmm. They have turned the ball over a lot, and they've also had to have had a rough patch in the run defense coming up late as of the last three games. But if we can shore all these, this stuff up, maybe the next half of the season will be even better than the first half. That's what we're hoping for right now. And as we enter that second half of the season, what do you think we can expect with these friends? Uh, country foes, I guess, is one of the put country it. foes. Let's. <laughs> A lot of John Denver, maybe a little bit of maybe too much. Later in the game. Oh, yeah. uh, shout out Gambling Gauchos for that one. That's true. <laughs> Mountain Papa, take me home. <laughs> but much like the Red Raiders, this group has had some highs and lows this season. They lost a couple heartbreakers to Pitt and Kansas to start the year, but have responded, having won three of their last four, including a thrilling win over Dave Aranda's Baylor Bears last week. Here's what Coach McGuire thinks of his next opponent and how they have battled back to be at the 500 mark. Neil Brown, uh, you know. Really liked Neil a lot. Um, got to know him whenever he was here. Um, he was the guy that came through and recruited Cedar Hill. Uh, just, a, just a great guy, really, really good football coach. Um, you know, I, they won a huge game Thursday. Uh, the guy, their guys played really well. You know, um, I thought their two big receivers uh, played well, and they're, they're really dangerous. We're going to have to do a good job with three and zero. Uh, their running backs, they've got some really tough running backs, and the quarterback threw the ball well on on uh, Thursday against a really good defense, uh, you know, and put up a lot of points. The thing that stood out the most for them, you know, causing four turnovers that really changed the game. Um, you know, they had nine points off of turnovers. Now, Mason, you used to live and work in West Virginia. You got to oh, cover yeah. Neil Brown for a little bit. Do you think a win like that is maybe a turning point for them as well? I think it really could be. First of all, shout out to all the good folks in Bluefield off that one. But uh, West Virginia has one of the most neediest and aggressive fan bases in the entire Big 12, let alone the, probably the entire country as well. So when you're messing up, they'll let you hear it. And they certainly let Neil Brown hear it early on in the season. And I think that's helped them fuel their way into this, like you just said, turning this corner that they've been able to do so far. Because when West Virginia hits, they hit. When they play well, they play well. You just saw it in their last game against Baylor, and 
I think it's not exactly the easy game that Texas Tech maybe saw early on in their schedule coming into the Jones. Right, of course. But we better call somebody else up right now. Thank you, I think we better call Collier. David Collier now joining us from Jones AT&T Stadium. Now, David, this game is the return of Graham Harrell to West Texas as West Virginia's co-offensive coordinator. Harrell means what to Texas Tech? Hey, Mason, how about we go with fond memories for this one? Of course, Graham Harrell finishing his Texas Tech career with eight NCAA records, including career touchdown passes. Obviously, the quarterback of that 2008 team where he finished fourth in the Heisman Trophy race and won both the Sammy Ball and Johnny Unitas Awards. 28 career wins as a starter as well. How about a bonus word? Health. Harrell starting three straight seasons for the Red Raiders in the 14 years since he was on campus. The quarterback has started an entire year just four times, and it was two different people, Seth Dagey and Patrick Mahomes. Red Raider fans no doubt longing for the one ability that Harrell has had over all of these quarterbacks, availability. I think that's like four words at this point. Let's go ahead and send it back to you. Never had a shortage for words from Collier, but I mean, he's spot on with that. When you look at a guy like Graham Harrell, he's on the Mount Rushmore for Texas Tech football players, no doubt. He's going to be one of the next guys to have his name up there on the Ring of Honor. And I would even make the case, granted, with Patrick Mahomes coming back next week for Baylor, as big of a star as he is now, Graham Harrell could be the most important quarterback to ever suit up for the Red Raiders, in my opinion. I tend to agree with you, and I don't think I'd argue with you there. But yeah. Mason, it's time for a break on Countdown to Kickoff. When we come back, we visit with Nick Ferris from Gold and Blue Nation to give us a sneak peek behind enemy lines. And later on, when it comes to experience, West Virginia's quarterback certainly has it, maybe even more than anybody in this conference. We'll take a look at JT Daniels. All that and more coming up after this.